Okay, this is W1REX again, and I'm going to go through an entire grinding operation on an FT243, turning a useless FT243 crystal into something uh, that one can use in the 40 meter band. So here we have the X Checker uh, crystal checking kit that we did at the Billathon. It's got an oscillator circuit over here and a couple of plates here to be able to measure crystals. And then we have the frequency counter here in the display. So I'll turn it on and show you. Um, well, first I'll, I'll show you something else. I don't know if you can see this one right here. It says, uh, there we go, 8600 kilohertz, channel 387. Uh, that was one that, as of yesterday, was in my collection. And I'll put it on these two plates. I'll just touch it on the two plates and hold it, and you can see. Wait a minute, that doesn't read 8600, that reads 7038600. -600. Just so happens, I ground an FT243 blank and put it inside this one last night. Uh, unfortunately, my <laughs> video camera battery went dead about halfway through the whole video, so you didn't get a chance to see that one. But I wanted to prove that it can be done. So that's that one. Now I have, here's one here at 6500. So I'm going to put that on the plate, and we've got it reading 6507. 0607 So that's roughly 6500 And I'm going to write that down on my desktop here. 650070. I'll, I'll call it a 70. Uh, you're not going to get down into the into the tens digit. Uh, you'll be lucky if you can go down to the uh, to the hundreds. But you're really looking to, to, to grind within a thousand, maybe the maybe the five hundred. So by putting this across the two plates, you can use it to measure a crystal that's in the holder. Now we're gonna take that holder apart. So I'm gonna switch this camera over here so you can see. There's my grinding scenario. So I'll see if I can't get that right in the center. I'll get myself a screwdriver. When taking these apart, there's a big giant spring that's going to pop this sucker up. So when you get close to getting it apart, you want to make sure you get your finger on there to keep it from flying. But you also want good torque down on these screws because there's some Loctite on the nuts on the back that you have to uh, loosen up. And some, sometimes they're extremely difficult. Uh, these don't appear to be coming out pretty good. You really want to have a good screwdriver. Preferably not a jeweler screwdriver, one that's got a good handle with some uh, that you can get some torque on. Now I'm holding this top down while I'm unscrewing these things because it's going to want to fly sometimes. And I'll show you when it doesn't fly, it's because there's a reason for it. These things are 50 years old, most of them. They're from the 50s or even the 40s. Again, I'm holding the top down and I'm going to keep holding it down until I know it doesn't. Okay, and if you see, let's see, it's hard to see. Let's see. I gotta get some light on the subject here. There we go. There is a there's a there's a um, where the two front and the back come together. But what you don't see, well, you can kind of kind of see it when you look at the crystal. There actually is a rubber gasket that that over the years becomes very glue-like. So that's actually holding the thing together. So I'm gonna again. I'm still holding it together because I don't want it to go flying. And I'm going to use a a flat bladed screwdriver just to break that seal and I'm gonna release that very slowly and so there's the top here's the rubber gasket and the big giant spring okay now I'm taking this apart now uh oh doggone it that one's of no value to me because that uses a square holder and uh, I mean a square crystal uh, which means that it needs a, a square blank and these replacement blanks I have I actually talk somebody who makes quartz crystal blanks to make and you can see there I've got it in this little matchbox but inside this matchbox is a brand spanking new I'm handling it only by the edges is an FT243 blank right there but it's the rectangular cut which I found most of the 
holders to be. So I'm going to crack open another one. This is not going to be of use to us because it won't fit in that holder. So I'm going to get another one. This is 6575. 6574. Okay, I got to write that number down now. 6574 570. 6574 74 570. 65. So I'm going to cross that one out. Now I'm going to crack this one open. Uh, we got, oops, we got flat, flat screws here. So I'm going to try to. Ugh. There's one. Ugh. I need a better screwdriver. That's pretty tough to open. Let me, uh, let me quickly run and get a better screwdriver for that. Gee, what a bummer. All my nice flat screwdrivers have decided to take a, some sort of a hike. There we go. Okay. All right. This this is a nice this is a nice uh, screwdriver set I got from Harbor Freight. It's got a nice good handle on it, so I think I might be able to get this one now. Oh yeah, she comes right out. Big difference between a screwdriver with a very thin handle and a wide handle when it comes to torquing and sometimes these old dogs really need some torque on them because of that Loctite that's on the back so again I'm holding the thing down I found the majority of the of the FT243's I've taken apart in the past have been rectangular blanks inside but that last one just happens to be square there's three different kinds there's 0 0.5 inches square and there's 0.5 by 0.6 rectangles and also round blanks so it's kind of a crapshoot what they are that's why when you see five or six of them in a bin for 25 cents each you grab them all or at least I do I have hundreds of them but I'm starting to get low because this this workshop just uh, just went through about hundred and fifty of my collection now this is this again this has got a little well I really want to pull these things out first this one seems to be it's unscrewed in the back oh we'll push it out from the back there we go okay so there the screws are off so now I gotta get that you want to watch out where that little pinky is because you don't want to end up putting that screwdriver right through your fingertip. There we go. I, got, I heard that thing crack. So I just did a little side twisting action and now very carefully. Oh yeah, this has got... Now you can see there's there is one of the of the copper arms on this contact spring has actually broken off it's probably still usable so we'll continue on and hopefully we can we can use it now there's here's the stack that's inside I'm going to take the whole stack out there's a crystal mounted between these two plates and those plates have little little dog ears on them machined in them to to create a cavity so I'm gonna put this back on this plate I'm gonna try to line them up nice okay I'm back over to the kit here I'm gonna line these things back up nice and neat 
Then I'll put my copper weight on here and see what I get for a reading. Six five seven five one hundred. Six five seven five one hundred and ten. Six five seven six five seven five one one zero. So that's reading about um it's reading about six hundred high in this holder than it did inside the the um, uh, the actual crystal body so I suspect that that spring is going to add or or take away about 500 Hertz so now I'm going to take this blank what did I do with it when I took it out did I put it oh I put it back over here so we're going to go back over to the grinding plate here sorry this is kind of crude I don't have a really good setup here I'm going to get these out of the way. I'm going to bring in the glass plate. Now I've got this glass, glass plate with this uh, wet dry paper on it. This is 500 grit wet dry paper. And I'm going to try to get the camera even closer. Okay, I'm going to take that crystal. Now this is... Let's go back. Oh, I didn't do that on this guy. So let me... Uh, and push this out of the way. Now I'm going to take this quartz crystal blank right there and put it on the plate. Put my counterweight on it. And that reads uh, mm, it reads uh, over there six nine nine eight one ten so that's actually out of band and I sort of designed it to be out of band or very low in the band these are cut at a uh, thousand parts per million so they can vary by seven or eight thousand during manufacturing but they also vary in the actual oscillator circuit that you have it in so because uh, every oscillator circuit is going to add a little bit or less capacitive loading to the crystal so it's going to change where it operates. Now I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to take my two fingers on either side I'm just I'm not adding too much down pressure this is 500 grit paper and I'm going to make these figure eights one two four five six eight nine ten 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25, 26, 27. Yeah, I did 27. I'm going to rotate it and do 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now you can see the quartz is left on the plate. Now, you can't just go and put it on the plate and measure it because of all that quartz dust that's actually still on that crystal. So the step that you have to do is clean it before you try to measure it again. Now I've got you can use distilled water but the problem with distilled water is then you gotta get rid of it before you measure it so I have some um, denatured alcohol which is gonna evaporate pretty darn quick and I've got a q-tip sitting here so I'm gonna take um, let's see, I'm gonna take a piece of paper Yeah, I didn't have this all prepped for this. I burned up everything last night in the old video. So I'm going to take this crystal. I'm going to move it to the edge here. Put my paper down. I don't want to contaminate the... Uh... So it was on the bottom side that I did the grinding. I'm going to just clean it with a swab with alcohol. I 
Of course, that's going to evaporate very quickly. And to make sure I don't have any other form material on it, I'm going to go to the edge of the paper. Um, and I have some other stuff I'm going to use. This is uh, one of those Miracle Fiber lint-free lens wiping cloths. So I'm going to pick that crystal up and I'm just going to put it in there and very, very gently wipe it back and forth. Okay. Now I've got a clean crystal after that initial grinding session. I'll move back over here so you can see it. I'm going to take I'm going to take these top um, plate off, take that old crystal out of there. I do happen to have a pair of fingernails here so I can pick it up. I'll push that back over there. I'll put this crystal on that plate. I'll put the other half of the plate on it. Very carefully. That's pretty fragile stuff. And I got seven seven oh oh four five twenty. So I just moved at six thousand hertz with fifty figure eights. So I'm going to turn over here again. I'm going to take this off. Let's say I want to go to something somewhere like. Uh, I'm going to try to go to 7035, right in between, exactly between 7030 and 7040. So I got a ways to go. I got another, I got another 30,000 to move it, and I just moved it six by doing 50 figure eights. So I'm going to go back down to my plate, and I'm going to do another hundred. One. Okay, that's 40, and I'm going to rotate it like 90 degrees and do another 40. Okay, that's 80. I, I want 80 instead of 100. I'm going to take and I'll slide it off. You notice I'm not doing, I'm not particularly uh, gentle with it either. I, I'm getting kind of cocky about this. Uh, I've taken enough of them apart that, uh, you know, you can, you can learn how to handle them. And they're not all, they're, they're fragile. Um, but they're not all that fragile. So there's the top side. I'll flip it over. I will clean off it with the alcohol on the bottom side. Okay, I'm going to slide it over to the edge. You can see it's already pretty dry. I'll pick it up and, and uh, do a little cleaning with the, with the microfiber. The whole idea about the microfiber is it's pretty much lint free, so you're not going to put any lint particles back on the crystal. So I'll Go back over to the okay. Back over there. I'm going to set it. I'm only holding it by the edges here. I'll set it back on the plate. I'll put the other plate back on it again, gently. You, if you drop it on there, you can probably end up breaking it. Uh, I'm going to line up these plates a little bit better. Make sure. It's sandwiched in there pretty good. Again, I'm not being overly particular here. Put that back on there. Oop, well, okay, we got 7,009. 
Now, I don't remember where that other one was. It 7,004 was it before? Yeah, 7,009. So that moved it another five. So uh, we're getting there. Now these crystals I bought, I had them supposedly manufactured uh, for 7015, but I have a plus or minus uh, a thousand parts per million, so that means they can range from below uh, 715 minus 7 or 715 plus 7. Okay, let's see. That's that went about six. We'll do another. We'll do another uh, 80. One. I'm gonna use some fresh. Whoops. I'm gonna use a fresh area on my paper over here that doesn't hasn't done anything. It will grind a little bit faster. Again, there's all variables you gotta play with. One. There's 40. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and do another 40. There's 40. I'll slide it off. Pick it up. Put it back down. Get my get my alcohol. Okay. Okay, it's been cleaned. I'll get my miracle cloth. I am just doing the lightest of pressure, and and uh, when I sandwich this and wipe it, just want to wipe any cotton fibers or anything off of it. Okay, I'll go back over here. that down the middle line that up get the other plate oops uh, get the stack all lined back up again That looks okay. Well, seven thousand and nine. That didn't seem to want to really move very far that that time. I'm gonna move my weight around just a little bit and make sure that I'm not Oh, 7,010. Okay, a little bit more direct pressure on it. Okay, so it's about 7,010. So, but I did cut it short. I figured I'm going to need about... The last night when I went to 7,037, I had about... Um, about 250 figure eights. I'm going to rotate my plate again and go back down to this unused area. Okay, I'm going to do another, um, looks to me like I still got a ways to go, so I'm going to do a hundred.
as 50. Rotate it 9 degrees. Okay, there's a hundred. Okay, back to my paper. You can see there's a little grit on the corners on this thing, built up. Okay, I'll flip it over. Some more alcohol. I'm going to use the other end of the now I, I have my fingernail pushed down on the paper and I'm using it as the stop so I can keep the crystal from sliding in one direction. I'm going to flip it over again, do the same thing. Okay. Get my miracle cloth. Nice, give it a nice wipe. Go back over to the frequency counter. Okay. Where did I put the other the other plate? I want to line these things up a little bit better. Those plates have got little little doggy feet on them to keep the plate. Uh, up off the surface of the crystal and in essence make a little chamber for the crystal to oscillate in Ooh, okay, here we go There is 7030596 so we are 4,400 away from our 35 now that moved um, 20,000 Hertz so 20,000 that one moved and that was oh what the heck was that was that a hundred okay so I'm gonna slow down I'm gonna move it in smaller increments I'm gonna grind it in smaller increments now so this time we'll do we'll pick another area of the this, this uh, paper is getting a little worn for this so I'm gonna go over in this corner that doesn't look like it's too, too ground up I'll do uh, 20. One. There's 10 in one direction. There's another 10, 90 degrees rotated. Get my paper out. I'm going to get a new As soon as I find my thing of uh, <laughs> all right, I can't find my thing of Q-tip, so I'll get my the other end of my Q-tip. That's relatively clean, and I'll clean this one off again. Okay, so it's clean. I'm gonna move it over to a pair of 
a piece of dry paper there just to help absorb any more of that alcohol. Get my wipe out. Pick it up. Just do a very, very, very easy wipe. I think I paid... I uh, can't remember what that wipe was. I think it was like $2.99 at the hardware store. Ace Hardware. Ace is the place. They got all kinds of good stuff down there. Okay, here we go. We're gonna we're gonna get this thing. You never do anything on the face of the curse. You always just try to move it by the edges. Okay, here's another. Whoops, I'll go back over where I'm working now. Sorry about that. I don't have a really good setup for doing interactive stuff. I have no help here. Just me, myself, and I. Okay, that's pretty well lined up. Put the weight on it. And look at the display. 7033-900. So I'm, uh, I'm 1100 away. That just moved roughly three, three k. So I'm about eleven hundred away. So if I do it one more time, I'm probably going to do only. I'll do. Um, let's try ten. I want to sneak up on it. I don't want to shoot over. I did that last night. I I didn't. I didn't cut down on the the number of figure eights until it was too late, and I went right by where I, my target was. Okay, we're going to rotate. I rotate. I'm trying to do this without changing the grid or anything. I'll do it over in this neck of the woods, and I'll do a, I'll do it through an area that, that has good paper over here and there. So here we go. I'm going to do ten. Okay, yes. One, two, three, four, five. Rotate it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I only wanted to move 1100 hertz this time, so I don't want to. I want to do it in smaller increments. Where's my paper? Okay. You can uh, you can actually measure it without cleaning it off, but I found it's it's um, kind of unpredictable as to whether or not you get a good reading. So it only takes a second to to uh, clean off the surface and. Okay, here's my... I mean, you can, consider, you can think of this as a very, very thin pane of glass. So there it is. My miracle cloth. Okay, I got it again. I'll swing this around again. And put it on. And try to drop it very, very carefully. I'm using my thumb, my fingernail on one end and the Jewelers screwdriver on the other to line up the two plates. I'll put the top plate on. And I'm not, I'm holding the top plate just like the crystal. I don't want to put any kind of um, oil from my skin or anything on the, on the faces of the plates. The corners are not too bad, but the faces I don't want to. Come on. That looks pretty good. I'll put my counterweight on it. I gotta center that a little bit better. Seven oh three four six ten. So I'm only four hundred hertz away from having seven oh three five. So I'm gonna do one more. That moved it. That moved it most of the way. So I'm I'm only gonna give it a few grinds this time. I'm gonna do maybe um, hey, let's pick a number. I'm going to do five figure eights. One, two, sorry, three, four, five. There's five figure eights. 
All right, and then I'm gonna clean it again. So, whatever it is, I'm gonna con call it good. Now I have, over the years, I've collected, I mean, I've been playing around with these things for years, and I've collected all kinds of crystals. So I have real live FT243s at every, um, every 25 hertz. 25 kilohertz through the band. You know, they're 70. They started the the military ones went 7,000, 7025, 705, 7075, etc. I have all those, and I have a few ham ones that are sandwiched in between, like 7110 and 7105, the old novice ones. Um, and so my eventual goal is to make a set of crystals that go every five. Okay, through the band where I want to play around with like in the queue up here or something. Okay, so I got it cleaned. We'll go over there. We'll drop it back on the plate. We'll line it up. We'll put the other plate on top. Oops. Okay, that looks pretty good. Put my counterweight on it as the other electrode. 703487. Man, that's a hundred and thirty away from my target. That's pretty close. Um, I I probably should allow for something when I put it back in the holder because because I know that it changed by looks like it changed by about 400 or 500 when I took it out of that compression fitting there so I think I'm going to leave it right where it is and hopefully it's going to change a little bit more when I put it back together again so I will I'll come back over here to my work area I'll get my crystal holder back out this is the one that was the rectangle yes this is the rectangular one Okay, I'm going to get uh, Where's my piece of paper? Uh, keep that clean. I'm going to get the first plate Set it down in the holder Get the crystal Pull it by the edges Get that down the holder. Get the other plate. Sometimes you see, um, sometimes you see little pieces of phenolic on top of the con contactors. Uh, it really depends on the, whoever manufactured the crystal, how they actually put all these things together. And I want to make sure that's in there good. And I think that was. We'll put it using this plate right here. So you compress it down and line up the holes. I'm holding it together. And I'm going to use the, uh, I like the Phillips a little bit better, so I'm going to change the hardware and put Phillips back in. The hole in the back is actually machined hex to hold that nut so I'm going to just put it in there and tighten away okay get another one I'm going to do the bottom one next It will hold together with just two. So we'll go over here, and this is the uh, the moment of truth here. Whoops! I'm going to go up to the screen, and 
flip that around so you can see it and I'll put the crystal down on it and see what we got 7033740 so it did drop down a bit when I put it all back together again so theoretically we want to go up another uh, 1300 roughly so I mean if I took it apart one more time and I want to go up 1300 so I probably want to take off another shall I try it take off another 10 okay we'll do it so we'll come back over here go down to my workspace take this thing apart one last time so we only put it together once but we were pretty darn close uh, ordinarily if I start off with a blank that was already in it uh, then I can see the, the true difference between the crystal measured outside the holder and the crystal inside but we're starting we started with a blank that I have no history on um, I really didn't know how I was going to get changed by this holder that big spring is putting pressure on these plates and whatnot, and so it, it, it contributes somewhat. Okay, so there's my blank again, right there. I will bring in my, my grinding surface. I'll find a place that uh, looks we'll go over here. So I only want to move a thousand. I'm not going to move very many. One, two, three four, five, one, two, three, four, five, ten total, okay, pick it up, and get my alcohol, Okay, miracle fiber cloth. Make sure it's as clean and dry as we can get. And I'm going to call it good, so I'm not even going to bother measure it outside. I'm just going to drop this sucker right in there. Put the other holder down, put the other plate on, reassemble it. Get me some okay. Put that back in this upper one. Okay, we'll put the third screw in. This guy right here, because we're gonna call it quits when we on this particular crystal. We've moved it. I've moved it close enough to where I want to be. Actually not really because I already got one that's about 7038 so hopefully this is close enough to 7035 to be part of my goal here. Okay. You don't want to you don't want to strip these suckers. It feels like it's got a little bit more tightening. Yep. Okay. This one feels like it's pretty tight. Okay, so this is it. Oops, sorry about that. I'm just trying to... Here we go. Crystal on the pads in the holder. Oh, 7034 500. So, yeah, that's not bad. 7034 500. Got it? So we've just turned to a 6575 holder with a new blank. We've ground it and moved it 
and set it at 7034510 520 510 520 um, I would say that's pretty good so I'll end up doing some more and rounding out my 40 meter FD243 now I just gotta go find a rig to put them in I uh, got rid of all my FT243 equipment and uh, so now I gotta go either make some or uh, get some more. That's it for now. Thank you. Bye.